In this video, we're going to cover what the jobs are of a first verse. So we're going to go through sort of a checklist of things that we want to make sure our first verse is accomplishing to know that our first verse is doing its job. So the first thing that your first verse needs to do is make the listener lean in. They shouldn't tune out when you first start singing. They shouldn't say to themselves, oh, that first line is just this really regrettable really just said before, done before line. I feel like I already know where this song is going. It's tired, it uses tropes, right? We don't want the listener to think that. Instead, we should hook them right away with that first line to make them lean in a little bit and sort of turn up the volume in the car, right? So if they're having a conversation with somebody in the passenger seat and this song comes on, when the first verse starts, you kind of want the effect of them being like, shh, turn up the volume, right? You want that effect. You don't want the effect of turning the volume down on the song and resuming the conversation. And because the first verse generally is going to be the lightest part of the song, the most dynamically small part of the song most of the time, a great way to make a listener still lean in besides just starting with killer lyrics is also by having a very catchy or memorable hook. So maybe you only have an acoustic guitar and maybe a bass guitar playing in your first verse. Maybe make a bass line that has a really catchy, interesting bass riff, or instead you might want to do something like a memorable piano riff. Think early 2000s music on the radio when you think like Coldplay, The Fray, Five for Fighting, stuff like that. Almost all those songs have a really memorable piano hook that tends to open the song and then also be the main hook that is happening during the verse with them singing over that piano part, but it basically being the vocalist and the singer at the same time. Think something like How to Save a Life, for example. The second thing that your first verse should definitely do is set the stage for the chorus and in general for the rest of the song. And a great way to do this is via what I think of as songwriting world building. So in a book, or in a movie, you often have world building at the very beginning of that book or movie to quickly establish what the world is like that the story is taking place in, right? At the beginning of Star Wars, you quickly establish this idea of there's this evil empire and then there are rebels fighting against them. Boom. That's the world that we're in. Now let's tell the story. And we can do that in our songs as songwriters specifically by answering three main questions and those are who where and when. So the question who is really, who is this song about? Is this song about me, right? Is it an I song? Or is this song about she? Maybe it's the third person, right? I'm talking about somebody else. We want to quickly establish who this song is really about. We also want to establish when, and luckily this is very easy to do because when is really just, is it, is it present tense? Is it past tense? Is it future tense? And maybe we can even get more detailed and give some hints at exactly how much past tense or exactly how much future tense it may be. But generally speaking, just the tense of our verbs is going to say when it is, right? If you say, I went to the store, We've already established, first of all, I, so we've established who, but we've also established when. Went means that I did it in the past. And then the last thing we want to establish, which is the easiest one to leave out, is where. So in general, we really want to make sure that our imagery and sort of the environment that our song may take place in, we want to establish that as early as possible. And the reason for this is basically think of putting paint on a wall. If you throw paint at the top of a wall, right, then it's going to, because of gravity, come all the way down to the floor. But if you just put it halfway up the wall, it doesn't go up and down. It only colors everything that is beneath where you put that bit of paint. In the same way, we want to make sure that our details and our imagery specifically, the things that will give people images in their brain, when you're thinking of imagery, just think, can somebody picture what I'm talking about here, right? Feelings aren't necessarily something you can picture, but if you say something like hiding in my closet, right, boom, now you have a picture. You have a picture of somebody huddled up in their closet with the lights off, maybe they're crying. So we wanna establish that early in the song because that's context that will bleed through the entire rest of the song. So when we get to the second verse and the bridge and the chorus, we already have that imagery of, okay, this is, you know, a she that 10 years ago was sitting in a closet crying, right? There's an image we can have that goes along with that, that bleeds through the rest of the song. So we don't actually have to re keep reestablishing, you know, somebody's crying in a closet or whatever it might be. The third job of a first verse that we're gonna talk about in this video is, 
that you need to leave room for the song to grow dynamically. The reality is that the first verse is almost definitely going to be, if not the smallest part of your song dynamically, very close to the smallest. So what I mean by that is when you think of, say, the waveform of your song, the recorded version of your song, how high it is, right? How big the waveform is, is basically how loud the song is. Your song is probably going to be least loud at the point of the first verse. And this is really important to do. This is something that you actually want to make sure you do because if the biggest part of your waveform is your first verse, then the rest of the song is going to feel like a disappointment. You need your song to go somewhere. Even if you don't have a chorus to build towards, you still want the climax of your song to be later in the song, not in the first verse. You don't want it to be disappointing after the first verse. And a part of doing this is that your song needs to grow to somewhere. Oftentimes, this is just in the form of a chorus, right? When the chorus comes, it shouldn't feel like a disappointment compared to the verse. It needs to feel more exciting, more big, more grandiose, more epic than your verse felt. And you need to leave dynamic room in your first verse in order for the chorus to feel that way. Because if it feels the same as the verse, it's probably going to be kind of disappointing. Or even worse, if it feels even lesser than the verse, it will almost definitely be an ineffective chorus. So like everything else in songwriting, you really want to make sure that things fulfill their proper role. And overall, the role of your first verse is to set the stage. So make sure you are setting the stage. You're not setting the stage and then lighting it on fire and having the most epic fireworks show right away in the first verse. You're just trying to set the stage in an effective way that from there you can tell an awesome story via, say, a play on that stage. But really, at this point, you're setting the stage. Just as a bonus tip here, if there is a lyric to spend extra time on within the first verse, it's going to be your first line. The first line of your song is one of the most important lines of the entire song, up there with maybe the first line of the chorus or the last line of the chorus, because that first line really needs to start hooking the listener, really needs to make them start leaning in, listening a little harder than they were before, rather than starting to tune out. And on the point about leaving the first verse room to grow dynamically, Note that this does not mean that you should make it musically boring. It just shouldn't have a lot of instruments and it shouldn't be something that is really loud in the context of the song. Instead, a great way to make sure the music is still interesting in this section is to actually have sort of a piano hook or a bass line or an interesting guitar riff that carries throughout the verse. So just keep in mind that huge dynamics and exciting don't necessarily have to go hand in hand with interesting. You can still have your first verse be very interesting. In fact, you should have your first verse in every section of your song be super interesting. But that doesn't mean that it also needs to be huge and epic and very large dynamically. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, you probably will also find my 10 different ways to start writing a song free guide helpful as well. It gives you five ways to start writing a song from a lyrical standpoint first, as well as five ways to start writing a song from a musical standpoint. And the main idea behind this is really twofold. One, with new songwriters, they often just don't know where to start. They find themselves staring at a blank page. So this gives you 10 different ways to just start writing a song without that horrible, horrible experience of staring at a blank page. But also, when you're a more seasoned songwriter, I think one of the things you can get stuck with is starting to write songs in the same way, right? You grab the same guitar, and you always start with maybe a chord progression, and then you sing over it, and you do that same process over and over again, and then eventually you start feeling uninspired, or you start feeling like all your songs start to sound the same, and you wonder why. And the reason why is that you're starting all your songs from the same place. So of course your songs sort of end up going in the same direction. But if you just change up the sounds that you play with, for example, so if you use an electric guitar with distortion, the way you play and the way you improvise and the way you start to write your song is gonna be significantly different than when you grab the acoustic guitar. In the same way, changing up a total instrument or starting with maybe a bass line. Instead of starting with a piano riff, you go over to your piano and try to write a bass line with it instead. These are all great ways to make sure you're keeping your songwriting fresh and you're also increasing your skills as a songwriter by starting from different standpoints. It's a really, really great way to stay fresh creatively and stay excited about your craft as well. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. Link in the description down below. I hope this video was helpful to you. I appreciate every single one of you for watching this video and I'll talk to you in the next one.